Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking fine today. Welcome in, welcome in. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Geolumine. I'm going to be covering DPS and sub-DPS, artifacts, weapons, teams, all that stuff. Let's start. But before we get into it, I would like to utter a warning for all ye who dare to trespass across the treacherous waters of a DPS Lumine. She's not the greatest character at all. She's what I like to call an incredibly okay-ish character. Her damage, it's not great. I have hit over 50k with her E, and she's really not the best DPS character. Like, she's a pretty good sub DPS, but for DPS, it's not great. I wouldn't recommend building her as like your only main damage dealer. If you're a new player, just coming in to Genshin Impact, you will get other characters, other five stars. You do not need to build her. She's not the only character you can run main DPS. I would only suggest building her if you really want to, if you really like her like I do, or if you're just incredibly bored of every other character in the game. And want to try her out. Also, I'd like to apologize to all the ether mains watching this because you're gonna have to listen to me say Geo Lumine and Lumine over and over again. I probably should have said Traveler for most of it, but I just call her Lumine. But remember, with Aether and Lumine, they're the exact same character, same builds, same skills, same everything, same damage. All right, I'm gonna start with a DPS build and then go to a sub DPS build. Her best in slot 5 star weapon is the Mist Splitter Reforged. Number 2 would be Primordial Jade Cutter. Then Aquila Favonia. Summit Shaper I would put in 4th. And then 5th would be Scoured Blade. I'm not at all saying Scoured Blade is bad on her, it's just generally you don't need that much energy recharge on Geo Lumine. And don't use Freedom Sword. For your 5 star sub DPS options, I would say the best one is the Skyward Blade because you're going to be off field, not getting as many particles as you would an on field DPS, so that energy recharge is very helpful. Number 2, Primordial Jade Cutter. It all depends on how much energy recharge you have, but overall I would say Skyward Blade, then Primordial Jade Cutter. It's kind of a waste to use Mist Splitter Reforged on a sub DPS Lumine, so I wouldn't recommend it, but it would be third. Then Summit Shaper, then Aquila Favonia. And Freedom Sorn is still awful. So for your four star options, Lumine's best in slot four star weapon would be the Black Sword. The Black Cliff Longsword, I would say, is number two. The prototype Rancor is free to play and also number three best. Next would be the Aminoma Kageyuchi, which is another free to play weapon that is very good, especially if you don't have a lot of energy recharge on your Lumine. The Sacrificial Sword would also be a quite an interesting option, because having two charges of your elemental skill would be actually very powerful for Lumine, because most of her damage comes from her elemental skill, and that energy recharge from the Sacrificial Sword would be useful to getting her burst. However, don't take the Sacrificial Sword off of Sing Chu to put it on Lumine. Like, it's just so good on Sing Chu that you should not take it off of Sing Chu and put it on Geo Lumine. However, if you're not using Sing Chu or you have two of them at R5, which I mean, if you do, can I have some of your luck? The best four star sub DPS options would be the Festering Desire, which is a very nice weapon on Lumi. The Emonoma Kageyuchi is number two. The Black Cliff Longsword is actually very, still very good on Lumine, even as a sub DPS. The Favonia Sword is a very nice option as well, if you don't have any of the other ones I mentioned. For DPS artifacts, I would go with Two Piece Archaic Petra with Two Piece Gladiator. The second option is Two Piece Archaic Petra with Two Piece Noblesse Oblige. Personally, I like Archaic with the Gladiator 
more. However, Archaic with Noblesse is a very good option as well. And if your Noblesse pieces are just stacked compared to your Gladiator pieces, I would use the Noblesse over Gladiator. Now for DPS artifact stats, you want crit rate or crit damage on the circlet, whichever one you need more. For the goblet, geo damage. And then for the sands, you want attack percent. For the substats, crit rate and crit damage, attack percent doesn't hurt, and energy recharge can be quite nice as well. And then for sub DPS Lamine, it's the exact same two piece archaic with two piece gladiator, or two piece archaic with two piece noblesse. Also, an option is the four piece noblesse oblige, which you can use if you want a noblesse user on your team you're definitely going to get more damage with the other two options but she can use noblesse oblige crit rate crit damage geo damage bonus and attack for the sands and then for the substats it's still crit rate crit damage attack and energy recharge however energy recharge on a sub dps lumine is much more helpful than on a main dps Alright, now I'd like to talk about Geolumine's talents. Let's start out with the normal attack. It's just 5 rapid strikes is the normal attack, and the charge attack unleashes 2 rapid sword strikes. That's the same as, like, every other sword character. Plunging attack, normal. The only thing different about Geolumine's auto attacks from other sword characters would be the talent Frenzied Rock Slide. The final hit of a normal attack combo triggers a collapse dealing 60% of attack as AoE Geo damage. Basically, this is a sixth attack that just deals Geo damage, which is kind of nice. All right, Lumine's elemental skill, Starfell Sword. Basically, if you tap the skill, you will drop a meteorite. If you hold it, the skill's positioning may be adjusted. I'll show you. So, if you tap it, she calls down the meteor and it smashes into the ground. However, that casting time is like insanely long, which we don't like. However, if you hold it, it pushes you into this aiming mode. So you can aim around and decide where you want to put it. Now how to animation cancel Lumine's elemental skill. The normal one, you just tap, it takes forever, and it smashes into the ground. However. If you hold the skill for a quick second, and then let go, it's much quicker. You didn't see anything. Like so. Getting used to holding down the elemental skill bond for a quick moment, and then letting go, it takes some practice, and takes some getting used to, but it's not too difficult to pull off also. Be careful not to aim the Starfell Sword underneath an enemy, because what it'll do is it'll just place the Starfell Sword underneath the enemy and like push them up and they will be on top of the rock, which is very annoying because you can't hit them anymore because they are above you. Now for the Elemental Burst, she just stomps on the ground and she just lets out these Geo Shockwaves, AoE Geo damage. So hits you all around them. What? What the fuck? Mm -hmm. AoE geo damage. So it hits enemies all around you. <laughs> so she stomped on the ground, does multiple waves of geo damage, and then sticks these spikes up. They're geo constructs, like the elemental skill. Yeah. So they will resonate with Zhongli's pillars. Shattered Dark Rock reduces Starfall Sword's cooldown by 2 seconds. Very nice. Alright, now the Constellations. Constellation 1. Party members within the radius of Wake of Earth, her elemental burst, have their crit rate increased by 10% and have increased resistance against interruption. That 10% crit rate boost is actually incredibly handy because you can afford to build a bit less crit rate on characters that are going to be within this Wake of Earth because of this crit rate boost. When a meteorite created by Starfell Sword 
is destroyed, it will also explode, dealing additional AoE Geo damage equal to the amount of damage dealt by Starfell Sword. Basically, you place down your elemental skill, and let's say it deals 17k damage. If it gets destroyed, or the timer runs out on it, then it will explode and deal 17k damage. Which is very handy, I have found. Will of the Rock increases the level of Wake of Earth by 3. The Shockwave triggered by Wake of Earth regenerates 5 energy for every opponent hit. Maximum of 25 energy can be regenerated in this manner at any one time. This constellation is very good. Like, you don't really need to build that much energy recharge on Geolumine because of this constellation. Basically, the more enemies you hit, you'll just regenerate a bunch of energy. Meteorite Impact increases the Starfall Swords level by 3. Everlasting Boulder increases the duration of Wake of Earth, the Elemental Burst, and Starfall Sword, which is kind of nice. Okay, so when it comes to Geolumine's best teams, basically any full Geocomp. Any team where the majority of the characters are Geo, she can pretty much fit it. My personal favorite would be Zhongli, Albedo, and then the last character is very flexible. The last character, it's pretty simple. Um, any other Geo character aside from Arataki Ito. And then if you don't have one of those built, then you can always go with just literally any character with off-field damage. Shangling, Singcho, Fischl, Kaya, Beto are just a few of the many off-field DPS characters. Or you can run Bennett, which would just be good because he's insanely powerful. Now for the team I use, Lumine, Ayato, Yunjin, and Bennett. I like Jiu Lumine and Kamisato Ayato a lot together because their cooldowns in their elemental skills line up with each other quite nicely. So you can place down Lumine's elemental skill in her burst, and then swap to Ayato, use his E, and then swap back to Lumine. Although you probably want to go through the full rotation of the team. And these last two characters do not need to be Yunjin and Bennett. You could run Shangling instead of Yunjin. You could run Noel. Again, you could run any character with off-field DPS. Also, I would highly recommend running Geolumine with just at least one other Geo character because the Geo Elemental Resonance is just really powerful. Enduring Rock increases shield strength by 15%. Additionally, characters protected by a shield will have the following special characteristics. Damage dealt increases by 15%, which is crazy. Dealing damage to enemies will decrease their geo resistance by 20% for 15 seconds. It's just very powerful, so I would highly recommend running her with another geo character. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions about Geolumine or Geoether, same character as I said before, call them whatever the frick you want, then please just ask me in the comments section and I'll get back to you as fast and detailed as possible. If you found this video enjoyable or helpful, it would mean the world to me if you could lightly tap that like button. Remember to be gentle because they aren't feeling very well today. Also, if you're interested in other traveler guides or DPS builds for characters that should not be DPS, then subscribe because that is kind of what this whole channel is going to be about. Alright, with that, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, night, morning, evening, whatever time it is. And with that, I'm going to go cry myself to sleep in the darkest, most sad part of the internet I can find. <laughs>